I want to take a moment right now, if you, if you have a second, to be able to just talk about the, the state of our world right now. And specifically, we've got the revival that, that has been happening in Asbury and the different universities that are, that are rising up. And um, right now, as we're recording this, it's the opening weekend of the film, The, the Jesus Revolution. And um, I just feel in my spirit that there is a, a new wave of, of revival that is coming, a new, a new Jesus revolution that we need to be ready for. Um, I just want to hear basically a, a spiritual weather report from, from your perspective, and you're out there every single day preaching the gospel. So uh, tell us a little bit about your perspective of, of what's happening in our world spiritually today. Yeah, I'm very excited about the revivals that are breaking out and this film that's coming out. Um, the question people are asking, is this a real move of God or is it just an emotional thing? Well, we'll see. Time will tell. If it's a move of God, I'll be impressed when people move out of the building we call a church and take the gospel to a dying world. We've forgotten the world's going to hell. And uh, uh, we've got a lot of Christians who are really great at worshiping God, uh, but they're not too great at the irksome task, as Spurgeon called it, of evangelism. And so what should happen is if there's a move of God, there's a wave, it'll push us out into the world where we can reach out to the lost. Think of what happened in the book of Acts. The disciples didn't stay in the upper room and worship the Lord. They went down and they preached the gospel as they'd been commanded to. When Jesus ascended into the heavens, um, it wasn't like beam me up, Scotty. The, the angel said, this same Jesus shall come in like manner. And we know when he's coming at the second coming, there'll be clouds and power and great glory. So it seems the ascension may have been in power and great glory and clouds and just a magnificent sight because the disciples were gazing up to heaven. Now listen to what the angel said to the disciples, ye men of Galilee, why are you gazing up into heaven? Go and wait from the, for the power that's going to give you power to witness. That's what they told him. And so I would say to the body of Christ, let's not get too caught up in worship because we've got eternity to worship God. People are going to hell and we need to get a burden in our heart for them. And we need to make sure that we go out with the biblical gospel. I've been in a revival that was huge. I was in the Jesus Revolution, 1972, down in New Zealand, where literally thousands of people made commitments to Christ, but many of them made commitments under the sound of what I call the modern gospel. Come yeah. to Jesus. He'll fill the God-shaped vacuum in your heart. He'll give you true happiness and lasting peace. That's not the way to present the gospel. We should preach as Jesus preached. We should open up the commandments and show people our sinners Otherwise, they won't find a place of genuine repentance and they'll be false converts and they'll fall away in a time of tribulation, temptation and persecution. So make sure we have the genuine gospel. And if you want to hear how to present the gospel biblically, there's a teaching called Hell's Best Kept Secret that the actor Kirk Cameron actually heard and came and wanted to join ministries once he heard that teaching. It's called Hell's Best Kept Secret and people can hear it at the bottom of the homepage on livingwaters.com. That will help equip you and give you boldness to share your faith. Because if you go into the heat of modern warfare armed with a feather duster, you're not going to be very courageous. But if you're given state-of-the-art weapons, those weapons will give you courage. So there are weapons that, are, that God has given us that are mighty through him to the pulling down of strongholds. And those weapons will take away your fears. Certain principles can help take away your fears. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, you mentioned in the book of Acts how... You know, Jesus said in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Uh, it, that's a promise, that you will be my witnesses. And uh, it's interesting that, yes, they did preach in Jerusalem, but they didn't actually leave Jerusalem until chapter 8, verse 1, where persecution came, and they were forced out, right. and they preached in those places along the way. So I, I love how you're saying that the tr the basically the true test of if this revivals that are a great experience there's a, a there's a revival of um, repentance that that we're hearing about going on there but to take that next step to go and be witnesses is the true mark of revival that is sustained I guess 
So yeah, let me share something with you that could be relevant to this. And it's something that yes. Christians should understand. It's going to sound a little radical at first, but I've been a Christian for 52 years and very rarely have I quote, felt the presence of God. Now by that, I mean, I have felt joy unspeakable continually. I have peace that passes all understanding, and I've been in meetings where they've seen such a joy, where everyone's singing, I've just had to raise my hands and worship. Just amazing. But you can get that in a rock concert. You can get that same feeling of euphoria as thousands or even 100,000 people are singing. You'll see unsaved people raise their hands in a sense of ecstasy because music can stir our emotions and bring tears to our eyes. So it's very important to realize that we live by faith and not by feelings. Mm -hmm. Often worship leaders can add to this whole thought by saying, let's worship the Lord as we enter into his presence. What? I thought God dwelled everywhere. We're always in his presence. And it's often said in a building, a building we erroneously call a church. The Bible says God dwells not in temples made with hands. In other words, if you have the impression that when you go to this building, you're entering into God's presence, when you leave the building, you're going out of it. And that's why professed Christians get in pornography that they'd never read in a church building. They'd never do that, never look at it on their phone because they're in God's presence, but they will in their bedroom at home because they think they're out of God's presence. No, the eye of the Lord is in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So that's why when we have a, a, a move of God and there's a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion, a lot of singing, and then the word revival comes out and then a lot of looky loos like me come along, you've suddenly got 20, 30, 40,000 people all worshiping God. Their emotions are stirred. But as I said, this will be seen as being a true move of God if they move out of that building into the world and say, people are dying. We're like doctors with a cure cancer, with a cure to cancer. We cannot but speak that which was seen and heard. So it took persecution to get the disciples to go into all the world. That That's that's what the church needs, something to stir us up, something like a, a soul of Tarsus to create havoc in the church so that we're scattered everywhere preaching the word. And I just got to say, I'm utterly horrified that sinners are going to hell. I'm horrified that people are living without Jesus, that they are subject to the fear of death, but to the thought of the lake of fire when they stand before a holy God, the one who created thunder and lightning, that horrifies me. And I say with the apostle Paul, wherefore knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And so uh, let's just wait and see. And hopefully we're going to see a great move of God that's going to change this nation and bring it to peace with him. Please peace with God. Amen. That is what our prayer is. That's what we're praying and believing for, uh, because we don't want to see just a, a quick wave of the, of the Holy Spirit move. We want to see the sustained power of the fear of the Lord, of the presence of the Lord, and people's lives being changed as they go out and preach the gospel. And the repentance on the streets is what we're going to really see as the fruit of of these revivals that are these re, what we're calling revivals in different places. Let's get it out of the church building. Let's, let's be the church and do what God's called us to do. And you will be our, it, we will be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, yes. Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Ray comfort. Amen. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today and uh, look forward to connecting with you again with more projects that you have going on. God bless. Thank you so much. Appreciate being on. Thank you.